there welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review and today is my final video for November I committed to donating all of my November YouTube channel membership revenue to the Movember challenge in support of men's health I didn't actually shave off my beard and start to grow this one until November 10th and as I'm filming this it's November 25th so this is only 10 days of beard not 30 so you still have time to click on my Movember challenge link in the description below to donate directly and support men's health I'm intrigued by how popular today's fountain pen has become in such a short time Narwhal has caused quite a stir in the fountain pen community with their interesting piston filling fountain pens like this Narwhal Schoolkill Porpita that I reviewed not too long ago but this new ebonite piston filler from Narwhal called the Nautilus has been flying off the virtual shelves I ordered mine from my favorite brick and mortar pen shop Reed Stationers here in Calgary the day that Narwhal announced the pen I called Carrie and asked her about the pen and she said she had just that morning placed an order for stock from Narwhal so I had her hold one for me they come in three flavors cephalopod black which has all black trim and a black nib Pelagia noctiluca which is actually a limited edition in a very interesting dusty rose and deep purple striped pattern and this bronze Corydoras which I have here I went down to Reed's to pick this up and by the time I got there all of the cephalopod black versions were spoken for and they had just arrived that morning I'm glad I put my bronze version aside so let's do a deep dive and go 20,000 leagues under the sea of ink in this Nautilus submarine fun fact did you know that Jules Verne's book 20,000 leagues under the sea in French is 20 milieux sous les mers which is under the seas in plural Verne wasn't referring to the depth of the sea which would actually be 116,000 kilometers and the deepest part of the ocean is only 11 kilometers he was referring to the length of a journey under the sea by a submarine named the Nautilus Verne was still exaggerating though as a journey of 20,000 leagues would take you around the circumference of the planet two and a half times got that there'll be a test later <laughs> just now got back from my favorite pen store Reed stationers on 17th Avenue in Calgary and this is what I got the new narwhal nautilus and this one is in bronze and a medium let's open it up comes in this white sleeve with the narwhal logo oil stamped on both sides take the sleeve off and we have the box that has narwhal nautilus oil stamped in, in silver on top and it has a magnetic patch here open it up and we have a card narwhal and on the back of the card are some filling instructions and some registration information and then we have the pen and a foam pad take it out of its sleeve and here we are this is the bronze model that has this wonderful effect on the clip and on the top finial it's in a very very glossy black and of course the most distinguishing feature these three portholes as ink windows and of course it is a piston filler piston seems to slide nicely and let's take a look at the nib and the pen does not post but it's very nice and girthy in the hand a nice large section well I'll be interested in inking this one up I've already got an ink selected I wonder if you can guess and what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen Narwhal has been naming their pen models and colors 
with a common nautical theme. The three colors of the Nautilus are named for some kind of sea life. The bronze is called Corydoras, which is a type of catfish, and Nautilus itself is a jet-propelled marine mollusk of the cephalopod family Nautilidae. But this pen owes its design more to Captain Nemo's steampunk submarine, the Nautilus, from Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, than to any shellfish. Stand by engines. Half ahead. These three portholes that serve as ink windows are all the visual evidence I need to prove that point. I want to talk about the overall look and feel of this pen. It is a relatively large and girth cigar shaped pen made of turned ebonite. Now this may just be because I've been writing with and reviewing this Ranga 3C ebonite pen, but holding the ebonite Nautilus for the first time, I was a bit surprised at how insubstantial it feels in the hand. Ebonite isn't heavy, but the Ranga pens, which are the only other ebonite pens that I own, feel much more substantial in the hand than the Nautilus. And this is really fascinating to me because it isn't the fact that the Rangas are heavier. In fact, the opposite is true. The Nautilus is heavier by every metric, the cap, the body, the overall weight, and put the Ranga 4C next to the Nautilus, and they're almost identical in shape with the Ranga being slightly longer. Of course, the piston mechanism is going to make the Nautilus heavier, but in the hand, it doesn't feel that way. Well, but when I concentrate on the weight, I can actually feel that the Nautilus is heavier, but the Rangas still feel like the Ebonite is thicker or something. It's very difficult to describe, but I had the same feeling with the Narwhal uh, Schoolkill Perpita. The advertising said this was turned acrylic, but every physical sensation I had was telling my brain that this was thin injection molded plastic. So much so that I asked the owner of the company to confirm that this was indeed turned acrylic, which he did. So here we are, deja vu all over again. Just had that little feeling. You ever get that funny little, that kind of feeling, that vuja day? <laughs> you know, not deja vu, this is vuja day. This is the strange feeling that somehow none of this has ever happened before. <laughs> and then it's gone, you know? Now that's not to say that this pen doesn't feel terrific in the hand, it does. The ebonite is very highly polished. I had to put this one under my nose to smell the ebonite. And it is ebonite. Others have complained that the ebonite scent is strong, but I haven't noticed that at all. Even under my nose, it isn't unpleasant. The feel is terrific. Ebonite seems to warm in the hand, and this pen is no exception. It is so highly polished, though, that it attracts dust. Many of you may remember high school science class, where you rubbed ebonite rods with fur or glass rods with silk to get a positive or negative static electric charge. Ah! Oh my God! Lois, don't get alarmed, but I think I might be Jesus. Peter, that's a static shock. Your pajamas created a charge of electricity when you dragged your feet across the carpet, and when you touched Chris, you passed it on. Kneel before Christ! Ah! Well, even just rubbing this ebonite with your hand or a cloth will induce a static charge in the ebonite. I found dust attracting to the shiny cap and barrel, and trying to rub it off just makes it worse, of course. The trick is to try to dispel the static charge. I found huffing on the pen. <sighs> will build up some moisture on the surface and dispel some of that static. Don't be caught blowing on your pens, though. You need it on the bridge, sir. Knock on my door! Knock next time! Yes, sir. Did you see anything? No, sir. I didn't see you playing with your dolls again. Good! Not good. I don't notice it as much on the Rangas as they are nowhere near as highly polished as the Narwhal. So let's take a good look at this gorgeous pen. From the top, we see a domed metal finial cap which has been given a treatment to make it look like antique textured bronze it's very interesting and effective the shiny ebonite black cap is straight right to the bronze colored and textured cap band which has a lovely 
deep sea foam and waves motif and the name narwhal you just see it in there narwhal twice the clip is a straight bronze colored piece of metal given the same textured treatment as the cap band and the cap finial and floats above the straight cap giving the whole piece a really nice symmetrical design unfortunately mine sort of bends just a bit i keep bending it over but it keeps going back there is a slight step down from the cap band to the barrel which is straight until it is separated from the piston knob by a bronze colored metal ring and then the piston knob ends with a domed end symmetrical with the cap finial the barrel has three circular ink windows offset from each other by 120 degrees they are indeed ink portholes not ink windows and each has a metal ring given the same bronze texture treatment in keeping with the rest of the hardware on the pen unfortunately the style design and symmetry of this pen are interrupted by the fact that the portholes don't line up with the clip there the porthole is lined up and even if the center of the portholes were lined up with that clip like that it would be much more attractive the cap unscrews with two full rotations to reveal a tapering section with a nice flare towards the number six size narwhal gold colored steel medium nib this step down from the barrel to the threads is very slight and the cap threads are smooth and unobtrusive the barrel and section are all one piece let's look more closely at this nib they are made in-house by narwhal it would have been nice if they could have done the nib with the same bronze texture effect as the rest of the hardware on the pen but at this price point it's probably asking too much although the nautically themed scroll work and the narwhal logo are the same as the one on my school kill porpita narwhal has made a different nib here the nautilus nib is slightly wider at the shoulders and has the nib size marked on the bottom shoulder of the nib there m for medium where on the school kill there is no indication of the size of the nib and here is a look at the plastic feed now this one makes me scratch my head as well they made the whole pan out of ebonite but there's no ebonite feed I think they dropped the ball on that one <laughs> and she stepped on the ball <laughs> the nib and feed are part of an assembly that unscrews easily for maintenance or replacement the nib from the school kill will swap easily with this one in fact the nib unit is identical to the number six size moon man or mojung nib unit and I have successfully swapped a moon man m800 unit into the nautilus as you will see later the piston works smoothly and flawlessly and the pen holds about 1.5 millimeters of ink another cool compatibility factor with the nautilus is that the wing sung tool for removing the piston mechanism on a wing sung 699 also fits the nautilus so you can remove the piston mechanism and while we're at it it also fits the school kill piston mechanism I've not tried to remove the piston mechanisms from either narwhal as I've heard a few stories from viewers who have tried to remove the pistons from their school kills and have cracked the barrels it worries me that the acrylic here in these school kills is that brittle and I hope narwhal doesn't get a reputation like Twisby has the inside of the cap shows a step milled into the ebonite that meets up with the flare of the section to seal the nib there's also a small plastic seal down in there that I assume holds the metal cap finial in place this pen does not post and it's not designed to post it is actually smart to keep the straight line symmetry of this pen intact but when everything else lines up perfectly symmetrically one element of the design that's slightly out of balance becomes very noticeable doesn't it unposted the pen is very comfortable and plenty long in the hand this is not a small pen here it is unposted up against my useful only for size comparisons pilot metropolitan oh, snap. i bought this pen from reed stationers for 153 dollars canadian and that's after my pen club discount of 10 percent which is around 120 dollars us and is exactly what gold spot pens is selling them for but without the 25 dollar us shipping charge the three main colors of the nautilus seem to be the all black cephalopod the smoky pink and purple 
Pelagia Noctiluca, and the bronze Corydoras. But I've seen some special edition versions, all sold out of course, in some very cool colors. Some look like they are part of the primary manipulation series. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Narwhal Nautilus with a Narwhal Schoolkill Porpita piston filler, a Ranga 4C, a Tianzi piston filler, and a Penlux Masterpiece piston filler. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. The Nautilus and the 4C from Ranga are both ebonite, but only the Ranga has an ebonite feed. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine, 90 GSM paper, and this is the Narwhal Nautilus in bronze. Cory Doris. It's an A. And it has a number six size seal medium nib. And the ink today is J Urbain. Stormy Gray. Here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. I thought this dark gray ink with the gold shimmer in it would be a great match with this bronze and black pen. Let's check the wetness. It's very, very wet. But I was immediately struck by how much more of a light gray the ink is from this pen compared to my Ranga 4C, which has the same ink in it. Now this is a broad, of course, but look at that difference. That uh, stormy gray is stormy black in the Ranga, where it is, in fact, stormy gray in the uh, Nautilus. Collision speed, full. Collision speed, full. Right out of the box, this nib felt like it had a bit of a burr on one side of the tines, which makes it quite scratchy in this direction. So that diagonal, that diagonal, not too bad in that direction. So for most of my writing, it's fairly smooth, but this is a bit of a scratch. I was anxious to give it a few strokes on my micro mesh, but I know people don't like it when I've smoothed the nib out before doing the actual writing sample. So I continued to write with the pen for a few days without giving in to smoothing it. And the pen actually uh, started to behave a little bit better as the texture of the paper alone took some of the bite out of the nib. Uh, there's still a lot of drag when writing with it though. Especially when going from right to left. As to line variation, well, there's nothing to be had. This is a very stiff nib in keeping with the uh, previous narwhal I had. The Porpita is a very, very stiff nib as well. And the Schoolkill Porpita had a very stiff nib that gave me issues as well. Um, this one is no different. The line this nib makes is six millimeters which makes it a Western medium or a Japanese medium broad. And for our quote,
and some quick writing. Actually, no issues at all with that feed keeping up. And some reverse writing. It isn't very scratchy, but it's very, very thin. Okay, so I mentioned that I had some issues with this nib. Um, they're very similar to the issues I had with the Schoolkill nib, and I've uninked this pen. However, I do like the look of this Nautilus very, very much, and I don't not want to use it. But even smoothing the nib won't make me like it that much. So I decided to swap it out for the last couple of days. And I've been writing with the Nautilus with a number six size Leonardo 1.1 stub steel nib housed in a Moonman M800 nib and collar. I have the nib in this green uh, Moonman M800. And all I do is unscrew this nib and screw it into that housing. So let's give that a try. So I'm just going to grab the nib and unscrew it from the Moonman collar. There it is. And then we're going to grab the narwhal. Now this will be a little bit inkier. And there is the Leonardo in the Moonman nib and feed collar. Well, that's the Moonman feed and the Moonman collar. And you can see that the collar on the narwhal is exactly the same. So we're going to put that aside and we're going to take the Leonardo in the Moonman collar and screw it into the narwhal. And here we go with the Nautilus. with a Leonardo 1.1 stub steel nib in a Moon Man nib collar and feed. So this is very smooth, of course, lots of line variation because it is a stub. Wonderful. And you might not be able to see it, but I'm getting a lot of that gold um, shimmer when the ink dries out of this because it's laying down so much ink. It's just really, really wet. So there you go. Um, and this nib looks awesome in this pen as well. So I think this is the way I'm going to keep this pen. Uh, and this pen will stay for me. It's amazing how much the nib alone can color your perception of the entire pen. It, it's amazing to me, but at the same time, it makes perfect sense actually. Where the nib touches the paper, that's the most important part of any writing experience. And then secondary is how the pen feels in the hand, the weight, the balance, and all those things. And then the aesthetics come sort of last. Uh, or it's supposed to come last anyway, unless it's a desk ornament. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. It. Help me in with this. Help me in with this. Help me in Just with this. Think of your secretary. Uh, yeah, that was a very good suggestion. But uh, I'm very happy with this now with that new nib in it. I think I'll write with it a lot. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? There's a lot to like about the Narwhal Nautilus and I can see why it's so popular and seems to be sold out now almost everywhere. First, the steampunk Jules Verne Nautilus vibe is very, very cool. Second, an ebonite piston filler is very cool too. But from a pure fountain pen in the hand point of view, the pen looks and feels awesome. I love the textured bronze treatment on the hardware, but I wish the portholes lined up better. 
It would have been nice to see the same bronze treatment on the nib, but that's minor to my biggest issue with this pen, which is this nib. It's just very stiff and uninspiring. What? That's what she said. I like that Narwhal's making their own nibs, but at $120 US per pen, they should be doing some better quality control checks on the nibs they turn out. The thing about Twisby is, even though they have some quality control issues with their plastics cracking, their in-house nibs are some of the best in the business at those price points. And if Narwhal is taking on the competition across town, well, they'll have to do better in the nib department in order to compete, in my opinion. I'll certainly give them kudos over a Twisby in the design department. That is just lovely for you steampunk fans. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And don't forget that you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section, and you get cool emojis and badges too. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.